to me, after seeing that last one, I look at this one and say, like, yes, thank you very much. We're still going to simplify it. Um, now, yes, we do see addition and subtraction in both the numerator and denominator. Um, whether you do or not, I mean, they're there. But I'm being, I mean, again, I, may, I will ignore no. the denominator. Okay, so let's look at that. Let's look at that numerator. I'm going to work below it so that uh, once we get it simplified, then I'll just rewrite it back into the numerator there. Uh, but let's take a look at it, okay? So I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna move it down so that I can actually work with it. There we go, all right. So from this, I need the denominators to be the same. They're almost the same. They almost look the same. They're not the same. This one is an m squared times n. This is an m times n squared. They are different. Uh, but what's missing? Well, in this first, denominator. I'm just missing an n, right? This is an n squared. If I could have an n squared there, I'd be in good shape. So what I need to do is take that n and multiply it. Let's see if I can do this right, but that'd be multiplied by n. But if you do it to the denominator, you need to multiply it into the numerator as well. Now, I mean, you could change this to n squared. I'm not going to. I just know that this is n squared, and I have to be okay with that because space, right? All right, that's nice. Now, this this denominator has an n squared, just like we made the n squareds match, but the m does not match because it's not m squared. m squared would be m times m, so I would take that m and multiply it by m, but if I do it in the denominator, I need to do it in the numerator as well. Now, I'm, I'm showing it as 9 times m right there. Hopefully, that's okay. Where we multiply it, whether it's in the front or back, doesn't really matter. But my denominator is now matched, so th this is where I'm going to take that, that expression right? The denominators match is what would have been m squared times n squared, which is simplified. But then I take the, the, the numerators, right? So I had the 5n. This was being added to the other fraction, which now is 9m. Now, as much as you want to factor because you love it so much, don't because we just want to keep this at this point right here. I mean, there's nothing to factor, but Keep this like this. Don't worry about factoring yet, okay? Now let's let's go to that denominator. So I'm gonna cover the numerator. And let's set this aside so we can wor work with it. See if I can anyways. That'll do. Okay, so this one, same idea, right? We had m squared n, m n squared. Same things are missing, just like this one was. So the first fraction is missing an n squared, right? So I'd have to multiply the n by n. So the 13 also multiplied by n. The second fraction, the denominator has just an m, but we want it to be m squared. So we're going to take that m and multiply it by m, and then we'll multiply the numerator by m as well. Okay, so we have forced the denominators to match, even though they don't look quite the same. But my denominator now is now m squared times n squared. Now, the fact that these two denominators from the complex fraction here match, that, that is significant. Uh, now, whether you know it's significant or not now, we will later. So what do we get in the numerator there? I got uh, 13n. Now, this one was being subtracted, right? So I got subtract. I'll show the 1m. You don't have to show the 1 there. You can make it a phantom 1 if you'd like. But now that I've gotten to this point, I have one individual fraction divided by another fraction. Not, not any fraction addition or subtraction, right? It's just fraction divided by fraction. Now I'm going to take that fraction, complex fraction, I'm going to rewrite it as division of two fractions. So let's get that rewritten. Okay, and that was being divided, that's the big fraction line, by uh, the denominator there. Boom. All right, well, it's division, but we don't want this to be division, we want it to be multiplication. In fact, you know, I'll take that back. So let's take that first fraction, which never will flip I'm changing this to division, or the division to multiplication. But let's take that division and change it to multiplication by flipping that second fraction. So that now it's m squared n squared over the 13n minus 1m. <coughs> now, at this point, since it is multiplication, I look for any matches in the numerators and denominators. I've got an m squared there and an m squared there, but I also have an n squared in the numerator and an n squared in the denominator. These go away as phantom ones. If you want to say they cancel out, that's fine. It's just that they become phantom ones. Now I will rewrite this, right, because that's what it equaled, 
uh, as a new fraction, but hopefully a little bit more simplified. Um, we got that 5n plus 9m that was left over from the numerators because that, right, it didn't have a match here in the denominator. And then the denominator that was left over was that 13n minus 1m. At this point, I'm going to change that one into a phantom one just because we don't need it. And again, you, you may look at these and say, well, can we factor these? No, I don't see that they can. But you should check. You should always check. Um, but yeah, that's, that's good.